Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to another video. This is Sikash Education and today we're going to be looking at 2020 AMC questions. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. So before we start, let me say a quick quote that describes you and our channel. Success requires patience. So with Sikash Education, you can do anything. Yeah. So now let's start off on question number three. So question number three is relatively easy considering the fact of all the stuff. So, let's get into it. Oh, oops, I forgot to erase this part. So let's just keep continuing, guys. So now what is question three asking us? You can see it's 2021 minus 1202. So we don't need to actually perform it out here, but let's just do it for the sake of it. 2021 minus 1202. And if you carry this out, mental calculation or thing like calculator, you will find out that the answer is 819. So the answer is 819, and that's the highlighted one here. Now moving on to question number four. So in question number four, they're saying us, on the number line below, the fraction 3 over 8 lies between dash. So okay. So a faster way to look at this would be, one second guys, let me just, Pull this thing over. Let me just pull it over. Yeah. So now we have this graph here. So 3 over 8. So now what's 3 over 8 in decimal? So this is a way that I would look at it personally. So 3 over 8 in decimal is 0.375. Yeah. So it's 0.375. And then you can take this r, right? You can take the value of r. r is 0 0.5. And then q, which has to be half of 0 0.5, will be 0 0.25. So we can clearly see that 3, 3 over 8 is between, is between these both fractions. So it's between q and r. So the actual answer would be 8, this one. A, B, C, D, E. So it would be D. Okay, guys? Yep. So now moving on to question number five. Pretty sure. Yep. So for some reason, you can't take this, guys. So it's my first time doing it. Okay. Let's move on to question number five. Okay. So they're asking us to find the area of the triangle. And we, first, we need to know the formula to do the area right so what's the formula well formula is half base h so base into height right so what's that so it's basically if we input our values half into six into four that would result in the answer of 12 because six into four is 24 and 24 by 2 is 12 right so now with 12, we know the answer here. So that's 12 centimeters squared. Centimeters squared because you're multiplying and you're finding the area, right? So it's centimeters squared. Okay. So now let's do the question number six. So you can see how fast we're doing it, right? Yeah. It's question number six. Relatively easy, this one too. Okay, wait. Yeah, I just gotta delete this, guys. Yeah, it's been quite a while since I've used OneNote. Okay. Yeah, we're ready now. So now, what do we do here? So Mr. Mia attempted the question. 3 into 2 plus 4. So let's find the answer first. 5 into 2 is 10. 10 plus 4 is 14. So we know the answer is 14. That's the right answer. Then, but accidentally swap the multiplication and addition symbols. Okay, so let's do the same thing again. 5 plus 2 into 4. And remember, we have to do the multiplication first. So 4 into 2 would be 8. And then 8 plus 5 would be 13. So she got 13 when the right answer is supposed to be, when the actual answer is supposed to be 14. 
So what is it? It's high by one. So the answer is too high. No, 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 whatever she got. It's too low by one. Yeah, it's too low by one. So therefore the answer is B, guys. So too low by one. Okay. Yeah. So now let's go on to the next question. That's question number six. Ah, so it's question number seven. So question number seven is asking us. Question number seven is asking us. I, yep, I can go in for you. So question number seven is basically asking us, guys. AB is parallel to EF. So first, let's label, like, let's get the part AB. So A, B. AB is parallel to EF. Okay, so we can see that, but yeah. And DE is parallel to BC. DE, aka. DE is parallel to BC. Okay, so they're all parallel in a way. What is the value of X? So we've got the X here. So what's the value of x? So now, how do you find it? It might look pretty complex, but no. Let's just do normal, like, like how we usually do. If it's 43 here, we know that it's going to be 43 here, right? Yeah, we know that it's going to be 43 here. So with, if that's 43 here, then we can go on like that. But all we can do to basically find would be find this one. So 180 minus 43 which would result in 137 it would result in 1 3 and 7 and you know if this both are parallel then even these both even this part has to be 137 right so therefore the answer is 137 guys yeah so now let's go on to the next question so question number 8 it's becoming a little bit wordy here. Okay. Yeah, so it was a little bit wordy there. But let's read it out. Damon made up a joke and sent it as a text message to three people in his class. These three people sent it to three other people in the class. So what we can do is, so we can so it started off with one. I usually like to do this. And then he sent it, one second guys, my pen disappeared, and he sent it to three people. These three people sent it to three other people. So she sent it to one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. No one receiving the joke had seen it before, including Damon. So how many people now know the joke? So we can see that we can conclude it's one, two, three, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So therefore, the answer is 13. It's just basic calculation, guys. Drawing a diagram like this would help you, like assist you, right? Okay. Now going on to question number 9. So what do they want in question number 9 from us? So dad puts a cake in the oven. At 11.49 a.m., the recipe says to bake it for 75 minutes. What time should the cake come out? Okay, so this is a relatively easy one. So let's add one hour to 11.49, so it's 12.49. And then we have 15 minutes. So let's think it's 50. 11.50 plus 10 is 1 o'clock, plus 5 is 105, and then minus 1 is 104. So the answer is 104 p.m. So therefore, it's 1.04 p.m. Okay, guys? Guys, we're doing great, really. Because right now, it's the last question. Okay. See, by the looks of this last question, right? Don't get frightened. It's not as difficult as it looks. So there are many cards, right? So now, what do we do here? So I'm shuffling a deck of cards, but I accidentally drop a card on the ground every now and then. After a while, 
I noticed that I've dropped five cards. From above, the five cards look like one of the following pictures. What picture could it be? Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to identify that five, if five cards have been fallen, so let's say this is the first card fallen, then the other card should have been fallen over it, right? See, like that's two. So we can, we can see that it should be fallen over. If you see here, we can clearly see that that's not the case because that's going under there, over there. So I'll give you guys two minutes, like no, 30 seconds time. You guys can pause it on your own, but try and identify. But I know that this is the answer. So I don't think there would be any explanation needed for this because if you see, the card starts off there, second card, this is the third, fourth, and fifth. Okay, so that is how you would do question number 10, right? Yeah, so we know that this is the answer. Why? Because that's the most easiest one. Like, let's observe everything. We gotta find the bottommost card. Let's say that one, two. That's not the case. So you gotta do a little bit of thinking here to actually get this question right. So guys, with that, we've finished 10 questions. So thank you for watching the video. So please consider subscribing to our channel for more videos on education. So with that, I'll be gone. Thanks guys.